Hey everybody, Canadian Operator here, and today we're going to be talking about firearm storage, specifically the legislation governing how you need to store your firearms, and even more specifically, the storage of non-restricted firearms. So we're going to be talking about rifles, shotguns, and pretty much any other long gun that meets the non-restricted category. For a little bit more information on what those classifications are, or what licenses are attached to them, and sort of the beginnings of becoming a firearms owner, if you want to go down that road, I already did a video, you can check it out up here in the top right hand corner of your screen, talking about those different licenses, classifications, and basically how to start your journey to become a firearms owner in Canada. Now this information is going to be very valuable to you, whether you are somebody who is a veteran and just needs a little bit of a refresher, maybe you're moving and you're changing the way that you're going to be storing your firearms, or perhaps you're somebody who is brand new and you want to learn how to get prepared for your Canadian firearms safety course. Because of course, you're going to have a practical and a written test at the end of your course, and you're going to need to pass both of them with an 80% grade or above, in order to be uh, basically eligible to apply for your non-restricted license. So you're going to need to know these regulations on how to store your firearms. There's a few different ways and we'll go over that in detail. And as always, of course, if you have anything to add that I may have missed, or if you have any questions, feel free to let us know down below. And of course, we also have a great Discord community that you can join. Link is in the description if you have any more questions or you just want to get in on the chat. That being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first way you can store a non-restricted firearm. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the first way that you can store your firearm, and this is going to be mostly for bolt action rifles, but of course it does work in other kinds of rifles. The caveat is just that it's much easier to do on a bolt action rifle. And for those of you who already know what I'm about to say, then uh, you might want to skip maybe a little bit ahead in the video. Uh, but that being said, uh, we've got our little MRX Bison here. This one's chambered in 5.56. I have done a video on this. If you haven't seen it already, do make sure to check it out right up there. Um, but this is, as you can probably tell, a nice little bolt action rifle. We're nice and clear. There is nothing in the magazine well there, as you can probably see, as well as nothing in the chamber. We're nice and clear, and ammunition is nice and far away. We've already proved the firearm safe. In any case, this is a bolt action firearm, right? So. What is going to be the best possible way to store this in a safe manner? Well, it's going to be simply to take out the bolt because everything that you need for this firearm to work is going to be in that bolt. And now that we have no bolt, there's no way for us to actually chamber around from a magazine. I mean, we could probably put one in the chamber with just our fingers, but we don't really do anything because we don't have a way to lock it, you know, to lock the bolt behind it because there's no bolt. There's going to be no way to, to make sure that we seal that area off so that we can create the pressure that we need to launch that projectile down the barrel and down range. So there's absolutely no way that we can actually make this thing work without this thing, right? Because our firing pin, the spring, everything is in here. The cocking mechanism, the locking lugs, and the means of creating that chamber where the pressure will build up inside of the cartridge, it's not gonna be there, right? So there's no way that we can possibly discharge this firearm. And now you can take that thing and you can literally put it wherever you want. You can throw it under your pillow, under your bed, you can put it in your closet without having to lock your closet. You can lean it up against your wall. You're absolutely fine. The caveat again, of course, that you have to keep the bolt outside of the firearm and you just need to keep your ammunition away from the firearm as well. That's a safe practice and it's always good to do so regardless. And uh, as, as you'll see, there's gonna be some patterns in this video where we're gonna be trying to go well above and beyond what the law says and not just following the bare minimums because it's a lot easier to articulate in a difficult situation that you're going well above and beyond and show that you are a responsible firearms owner than to just explain that, well, I'm doing the bare minimum and then, you know, you're technically right, but do you wanna be right or do you wanna be technically right, right? So that's gonna be the first way. Let's go ahead and move on to the next best way to secure and store your firearm. All right, so while we have the bison out still, let's go ahead and talk about the second best way to store your firearm, your non-restricted firearm, of course, and that's gonna be to, to use a locking device. Now, a locking device, there's two main variations that come available in the market, and the one is going to be your basic trigger lock, which comes in two halves and locks together with a ratcheting mechanism and usually has some kind of code on the outside, like a combination code that you can put in to unlock it and then take the two halves apart and take it off your trigger. Now, I don't have one with me, but basically the way that works is you've got your trigger there, right? And that lock comes from both sides and basically there's a little crossbar like where my fingers are, right? And that's what keeps the lock closed and prevents any kind of access to inside the trigger guard. Now, the nice thing about that is, of course, we all know that in order to discharge a firearm, we need to pull the trigger, right? So if we're able to somehow move that trigger guard and uh, we've otherwise been able to load a magazine, which you can do with a trigger lock on, 
we've been able to cock the action, which you can do with the trigger lock on, and we've been able to chamber around, which again, you can do with the trigger lock on. The only thing that stands in our way now is, is that trigger lock loose enough where we can pull it back far enough where that crossbar that's going through connecting the two sides can pull the trigger, right? And if we can do that, then that device is completely useless. And like Rod Giltaka from Civil Advantage Firearms Training said, I completely agree with him. I don't like that way uh, of, of securing a firearm because it's really not a safe way. Uh, it, it is one way that you're going to delay someone from accessing your firearm. And of course, that is going to be sort of the main means of uh, preventing anyone from uh, misusing your firearms or even from yourself from misusing the firearms or maybe a spouse or a child or something like that. We want to just delay them. All right. Uh, if somebody is determined enough, trust me, they're going to get through it, whether it's going to be a trigger guard, a cable lock, whether it's going to be, you know, finding the bolt, <laughs> hopefully not, whether it's going to be drilling through your uh, gun cabinet or your safe or anything like that. If somebody is determined enough, they will do that. Um, the only reason that we're doing all these things is just to delay them and to deter them from doing those things. So if the trigger lock doesn't work very well, then what works better? Well, we have this little thing. And this is what's called a cable lock for obvious reasons. As you can see there, just a nice cable and we've got a nice lock at the end. And that one uses a key instead of a combination, which I am kind of partial to, right? Because if you just have one key and that key is always with you, then really short of kind of cutting this thing off with some kind of tool, you're probably not gonna be able to get through it or perhaps even picking the lock if you guys are avid lock pickers. Again, we're not trying to necessarily stop somebody, we're just trying to deter someone. But here's the real reason why I like this kind of lock. So let me see if I can get this around here, do this with two hands if I can. There we go, just barely got it on there. Okay, so now as you can see, we've got that uh, cable going right through the action. Right? I'm not sure if you're able to see very well in there, but there is going to be, first of all, there's no way for us to put a magazine in there, right? Because the tolerances in that magwell are going to be very tight, just like they are pretty much for any firearm. And having a big cable running through that is going to prevent us from even putting ammunition in the firearm. But you can still have the action open and you can still technically put a cartridge in the chamber, right? Well, yeah, you probably could do that, especially for a bolt action firearm like this. But here's the other thing we can't close that chamber, right? So as you can see there, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that and we're gonna move it. And there's just no way that we're able to close it. And so in so doing, or not being able to that is, uh, we're basically prohibiting the firearm from firing or preventing the firearm from firing. Because in order to fire the firearm, not only do we need a means of getting the ammunition in the firearm, but we also need to be able to close the action. We need to be able to cock the action, which it currently is, but because we can't close it, we can't discharge and recock it. And we can't make a seal, right? We've got these locking lugs at the end of the bolt here that go inside. And when you flip that bolt down, it locks. So what it's doing is it's locking that cartridge in the chamber and, and creating those ideal conditions for being able to create the pressure necessary inside the cartridge to then spit out that round down the barrel, down range and wherever it happens to go, right? So I like using a cable lock. I know it's a little over explained here because it just completely prevents the action from working. But either of those two are legal ways. Again, I like to go above and beyond. I have a safe as well, which is another way that you can do it, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if, you're, uh, if you don't have a safe, if you don't have a closet or anything where you can lock your firearm, then this is literally the best way to do it. And these things are dirt cheap. They're like, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20 bucks. Um, I'm sure if you want a really good one, uh, then, you know, you can probably spend, I'd say, I don't know, maybe 30 to 50 bucks for one. Um, but they're very effective. They prevent you from loading ammunition, magazines, anything like that. They prevent the action from closing and they prevent you from being able to discharge the firearm. Again, it's, uh, it's very good. So uh, Rod was right. I, I would be inclined to agree with him and I hope you do as well because that's literally one of the simplest ways, also one of the most effective ways to store your firearm. All right, so method number three, how to store your non-restricted firearm. You can store your non-restricted firearm along with ammunition, though there's a caveat there, so continue watching, uh, in any kind of locked room, case, bag, safe, cabinet, or anything else that cannot be easily opened or broken into. Uh, and you can, as long as the firearm is unloaded, that's the big caveat there, uh, you can store your ammunition alongside of it as well. So for example, if I have a gun bag, right? And I want to put my uh, bison in the gun bag and I want to put a couple of boxes of ammunition inside the gun bag. Of course, I'm not loading it into the magazines. Of course, I'm not loading it into the firearm. The firearm must always remain unloaded. This is true for all of the other uh, methods that we've mentioned as well. 
But if, if I'm going to the range tomorrow, right, and I want to get my firearm ready, I've cleaned it up, it's really nice, it's good to go, the action is closed, there's no magazine inside of it, I put that in the bag, and I take out maybe three or four boxes of 5.56 five, ammunition, and I put that, you know, just throw it in the bag, close the bag, put a padlock on it, bam. Okay, that is now locked, and that is totally okay. I can put that on my couch, I can lean it up against my door, uh, it's fine. It doesn't need to be in the safe anymore because it's in a locked container, the container being the bag, right? Uh, you can do the same thing with hard cases. You know, you can put something in a hard case, you can put ammunition in there as well. Again, as long as the firearm is unloaded, you can lock that case up, you can stick it under your pillow, albeit probably wouldn't be very comfortable sleep. You can put it under your bed, you can throw it in your closet, whatever you wanna do, right? So if you are, for example, a beginner firearm user, a beginner firearm collector, you're just getting started in your firearms journey, and maybe you don't have a gun safe, you don't have a dedicated gun cabinet or a gun safe or something like that, um, but you do have some bags. Maybe you have your very first firearm and it came with a bag. Well, great, guess what? You can throw some ammunition in there, again, as long as the firearm's unloaded, you can put your firearm in there, you can close it up, and you can put a padlock on it or any other kind of locking device, and as long as it's locked, it's absolutely fine. Now, you can combine these two methods, for example, like the previous one, if you have a cable lock, for example, right? You don't even have to put your gun in a bag, but if you wanna store it with ammunition together, um, that's gonna be fine as well inside of a bag. Again, has to be unloaded, but if the bag is not locked, the firearm needs to be locked, right? So that's something else that you can do uh, if you don't have a padlock or, or whatever, but I mean, in most cases, most bags, you're gonna be able to even put this on the outside of the bag. Now, I probably wouldn't do that. This was designed to go through the action of a firearm, and in my opinion, that's a lot safer. But again, you have options, right? Uh, if you have a gun safe, if you have a gun cabinet, again, the same thing. You can you know, throw all your firearms in there. Uh, you can put ammunition in there as well. Again, the firearm needs to be unloaded. I can't stress that enough. Um, but you can throw everything into one big locked metal box. You can put a lock on it, and you can walk away, and you're totally fine, okay? It's totally legal. Now, a huge caveat here, and I mean absolutely huge, and guys, if you have, you know, or, or ladies, whoever's watching, right? If you're living with a partner, okay? If you've got friends coming over, uh, if you have roommates, if you've got family, anybody in your home who is not a licensed firearm holder. My safe works on a key. My keys are with me all the time, no exceptions. If I'm sleeping, my keys are right beside me. If I'm hanging out on the couch, my keys are hanging off my, uh, my belt, right? Um, when I'm making videos, my keys are right in front of me. Nobody, and I mean nobody else, has access to those keys and thereby has access to my gun safe. That is really, really important. And I stress this because I watched a video uh, at some point, I think it was a, a video by Runkle of the Bailey. Uh, it's a channel made by Ian Runkle, is a criminal defense attorney and specializes in firearms. And I think he made a video emphasizing the importance of your partner getting their firearms license as well. And he used an example of, well, let's just say, theoretically, that for whatever reason, the police show up at your door, they wanna come inside, they wanna make sure uh, that your firearms are being stored you know, safely. Not that they would have any business doing so unless you own like, you know, a thousand different guns, right? But I mean, let's just, let's just play along, right? So let's just imagine the police come to your door and you just happen not to be home, right? Let's just say that your safe is not locked by a key, like minus, right? So let's just say that the safe is locked by a combination. Whatever that combination is, we could say it's one, two, three, four, it doesn't matter. And your partner knows the combination. You're not home, the police are there. Hey, uh, we just wanna make sure that the firearms are being stored safely, no harm, no foul, we just, it's a courtesy check, right? Your partner comes to the safe, they open the door, and they immediately get arrested. Why? because they have access to firearms and they are not licensed. This is really, really, really important. If you have something that is accessible by a code, you need to make sure that nobody knows that code. If you have something accessible by key, you need to make sure that nobody has access to your key. If you have a spare, you know, keep it in a place that only you know where it is, or better yet, just don't have a spare. It's a little more risky, but you know, um, for example, I have uh, a little tag on my keys where I can find my keys no matter where they are. So even if it's an emergency, you know, and I'm like, did I leave my keys on the couch? Did I leave them on the table? Whatever, I can always find my keys, right? Um, never had to happen to me before because I always keep my keys with me, but again, uh, it's just a little safety measure you can have, right? But anyway, without babbling on further, uh, any of those things are fine. You know, if you have a big safe, again, you can put your, your uh, ammunition and your firearms and everything 
as you probably expected, I'm going to say as long as the firearm's unloaded, you can put everything in a box, in a room, in a container, as long as it's locked and only accessible by you, you're totally fine, okay? Now, again, for me, I like to go above and beyond the law. I have a gun cabinet, which you guys have uh, probably seen in previous videos, where I have one side that is separately locked from the other side, and on one side I have all of my magazines, all of my ammunition, reloading stuff, whatever, uh, and then on the, on the other side I have only my firearms. They don't have any magazines, there's no ammunition, nothing like that there. I have locking devices and firearms on one side, ammunition on the other side, and only one of those two sides can be opened at any given time. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found the video a bit entertaining or maybe a little informative. Whether you're someone who is just thinking about getting into firearms or a brand new firearms owner, or maybe you're someone who's been around the block a little bit and uh, just needed a bit of a refresher. That being said, feel free to leave your thoughts below if you feel like I've missed anything or just have an opinion on the subject. We do have a growing firearms community in our Discord server as well. The link for that's in the description. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so for free just by becoming a subscriber, leaving a like, and sharing this video with your friends friends and family so that we can help to educate even more people. Thank you again so very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.